tighter sisters tomorrow. So these are gonna be some excellent wedding workouts that you can do along with the um, the Power Tony Sexy Workout series. Those are excellent workouts. And you guys thought I was just doing those to do those? No, those are excellent exercises that you can do for any occasion. And in my case, that's how I'm prepping myself to look awesome and amazing in my wedding dress, okay? So I'm gonna get into these workouts. We're gonna be doing uh, using the treadmill a lot, okay? Because treadmill workouts is something different. I don't do too many of them, but I wanna do them to kind of change it up and show you how you can incorporate um, using the treadmill into your workouts and to maximize those. Now, if you don't have a treadmill, I want you to, you know, simply do high knees. Just, you know, regular high knees. You can get a jump rope and do high knees. You can jog around in your house. If you don't have a treadmill, you can jog outside. You can walk. You could always walk on incline on the treadmill. And, you know, you create your own cardio. There's tons of cardio. I've done a gazillion videos of different cardio exercises. So if you want to do you know, lateral ski jumps as your cardio. Let that be it, okay? But for purposes of me, I'm going to hop on the treadmill and show you some treadmill work and how to get in amazing shape for your wedding dress, okay? So, and then again, if you um, are following me on my, on my website, I don't know for sure right now, but I might post a picture of me in my wedding dress. So again, you have to go to my website to check that out. But until then, I say let's get fit so that I can let go for my wedding, okay? Here's our workout. All right, so as you can see, again, this is a, a long workout. It's gonna roughly be about 30 minutes is how long it might take some of us. And again, it's totally intense and it's really, really good. It's gonna make you feel good. You're gonna be getting your cardio in and then you're getting your strength in with the exercises that I'm going to show you, okay? So let's go. All right, Hanging Tighter, so for this workout, we're gonna be doing one minute of cardio in between each of these exercises, okay? So that's one minute of cardio. Again, I'm using the treadmill. If you do not have a treadmill, again, I already explained, you know, use some other form of cardio. Jumping rope is awesome. There's so many different jumps. You can go in and out, you can go front and back, you can go high knees, you can go uh, butt kicks and then high knees. You get the gist. There's a gazillion things that you can do in terms of cardio, okay? So important when doing cardio, you need to make sure that you still are doing the Hang Tight with Mercy warm up, okay? Because you want to be fully warmed up before you jump and do cardio. So that when you do do your cardio, you can push yourself 80%, okay? So 50% is you know a moderate pace but we want to get the cardio up going really really fast for our workout today okay so the one minute of cardio i want you putting that speed up and i want you pretty much to do a sprint you can't do a sprint that i want you to do again 80 percent okay so that is in key for the treadmill okay so i'm going to go ahead and get on and get started okay you want your plank to be effective, okay? So you cannot have 
a flat belly right here. If you can do this, like I always say, rock solid abs. That's what you need. In case you're gonna be doing 50 of these, you're gonna be extended up into your downward dog position, and then you're gonna come forward and breathe. Make sure you're holding everything very, very tight. Make sure that your neck is not crunched up like this. Go ahead and relax those shoulders back from your uh, neck. Okay, so real time like this. As you see, my body is a completely straight line out in front of me, okay? So for beginners, I still want you to try, but you're gonna have to rest in between each rep. I want you up, and I want you forward, knees, back. Go up, forward, knees, back. That's gonna be your variation. You're doing 50. Do I want beginners to do 50? Yes, I do. If for any reason you hurt, you're like, Marcy, you're driving me crazy, stop, okay? Do maybe 25, but that is going to be the first exercise. Stepping it up a notch, the next exercise, we're gonna be doing a left uh, downward dog to plank exercise. This is definitely a um, intermediate to advanced, but I'm gonna show you exercises. I'll show you for beginners, okay? So we just did this. We were just in downward dog. We went to our plank here. Let's go ahead and put the right hand behind your back. I want you up in the downward dog, holding yourself up with one arm. Your hand is still out wide like a high five. You're still gazing at your belly button when you're like this. And then you're going to extend forward like this. Now this hand, you wanna put it on your glute, you wanna put it on your hip, your head, it doesn't matter, but just get it out of the way because we're strengthening and toning this left shoulder, this left arm, and our entire core, okay? So doing these exercises are a plank and core exercise, okay? So here, we're up and we're down. Still holding a very tight plank. We're up and we're back. We're up and we're back. And guess what? You're still doing a lot of these, okay? So make sure that you look at the description. I want you to do all of these reps, okay? From there, you're simply going to do the same after you run your minute with the right arm. You gotta have a balance, okay? So the same thing, again, out by like a high five. You're up, your feet should be shoulder distance apart, okay? You don't wanna be out wide like this doing this exercise. So let's go ahead and keep it in on the mat. And let's go ahead and extend forward and extend back. Extend forward and extend back. Now, where you put your hand is up to you. If you want to put your hand in the middle of your mat, which would be the middle of your body, that's fine. If you want to keep it out to the left, that's fine too, but make sure that it feels comfortable for you because everyone is different, okay? So for um, beginners, here you go. I want you to try to just extend that body up. One arm, hold your body weight up. Go ahead and rest those knees on the ground. Go ahead and hold that body up. The rest of those knees on the ground. And you're going to feel the sweat, you're going to feel the burn, and you're going to love it, okay? That's those exercises. All right, 50 weighted rotated squats, okay? So I'll move these weights out the way first. But so you know, I'm using 25 pound dumbbells on each side, and you can do this body weight as well, okay? Go ahead and put your hands in fist. Go ahead and put your feet shoulder distance apart, but slightly slanted out. From here, instead of doing a typical Squat, we're going to be doing a weighted rotated squat. So our hands, our fists, are going to be on either side of our leg just like this. And we're going to squat down 90 degrees and come up, okay? We're going to rotate to the other side. We're going to squat down on either side of that leg and come up, okay? So that's going to be the variation for um, beginners or if you do not have weight, okay? So again, you're rotating over. Your core has to be tight. You don't want a flabby core trying to rotate over and do these squats. High core, rotate over, kind of like your cheerleader with your hands. Go ahead and do that squat 90 degrees and come up. Rotate over, 90 degrees to your squat. Okay, so with the weight, it's gonna like this. I have 25 pounds. Again, you do not wanna sling these weights around and hurt your lower back. Okay, so do not get weight heavier than you can do, all right? So my feet are out wide, about shoulder distance apart. I'm going to rotate over to my left. I'm going to do my weighted squat. And as you see, I'm breathing out as I'm rotating. I'm going to rotate to the other side and do my weighted squat. Okay, real time like this. Okay, and that breathing is going to help you if you dare try and hold your breath. 
while doing these exercises, you literally might pass out, <laughs> okay? So from the side, here we go. Great. Weighted, rotated squat. I'm rotating. I'm down. I'm rotating. I'm down. Just like that, that's going to be that exercise. For the low of core, all right, so the core exercise we're going to be doing, you're going to be counting off one and then two, all right? So anytime you see the word prisoner in an exercise, that means your hands are going to be behind your head. All right, so we're going to be doing leg lifts. We're going to be doing prisoner crunches, okay? So our hands are behind our head, okay? And we're going to be doing leg lifts, okay? So go ahead and bend one leg, and what you're going to do, as you come up with your, with your arms, you're going to also be doing that leg lift. So just like this and back down, rotate, okay? And you're gonna do this at a fast pace. You're gonna go up, you're engaging your core. Anytime you're holding your body up with one leg, not only are you toning your leg, but you're toning your core as well, okay? And you're gonna go back down. So real time, you're gonna go up, down, up, down. Just switch. And if you don't wanna touch that leg on the ground, as you see, if you wanna switch like this, that's completely fine, it's up to you. If you wanna rest, that's fine, and then do your leg lift, that's fine. So you're up, down, rest, up, down, rest. Now, if you want to hold your crunch up, one, two, three, and down, that's completely fine. It's gonna give you a little additional challenge, okay? So for beginners, here I want you to do. I want you to try and go up, and down, and rest. Pretty much the same thing. Go ahead and rest those legs on the ground and the back, Make sure that you're engaging your core. Make sure that you're not doing this with your neck. Okay, I want it strictly core. You should be able to remove your hands from behind your head and go up in the same manner as though your hands behind your head didn't matter. Okay, so the hands behind the head is just to get those arms out the way, forcing you to use your core. Okay, so we're up and down. All right, that's gonna be that exercise. So the reason I love pink type Marky workouts is because we're working our total body the entire workout. Okay, so we've been working on our core, we've been working on our legs, we've been working on our shoulders. Guess what's next? We're gonna be working on our chest and core more, okay? So we're gonna be doing some um, some crisscross push-ups, okay? Um, we haven't quite done these before, maybe some form of variation, okay? And it definitely is an advanced move, but again, I'll show you the variations for beginners, okay? So another benefit, working out at home, you get your carpet so you can get your knees, um, not so busted up on the gym floor if necessary. It's not so pretty as your mat. I just don't feel like it right now because I'm kind of roughing, out, roughing it out when I work out, so it's cool. All right, so a push-up. Naturally, school for a traditional push-up. Our hands are under our shoulders, and we have a very tight core, okay? Our hands are still out wide, like a high five. When doing your push-up, have a neutral head. Try not to look down too, too much. As it gets harder, we all look down, but try and keep that head Looking straight up and forward, and my hair is doing funky stuff, sorry. <laughs> and I want you to just go down and do your push-up, okay? Just like that, all right? That's kind of step one. Beginners, your push-up variation, you're on your knees, your feet are up or they're bent, you're doing the same thing, and you need to try and go down as far as you can to the ground and back up, just like that. From here, we're gonna be doing the crisscross, okay? So, let's go ahead and kind of put those legs out wide, just a little bit. So they're a little bit wider than shoulder distance apart. You're going to start with the right leg. You're going to crisp that leg over that back leg, out wide, do your push-up. Okay? Cross that leg over, cross it back, do your push-up. Okay? Definitely an advanced move like I mentioned. Okay? So for beginners, you're on your knees. Here you go. You're doing your push-up. Oh, actually, sorry. You're going to do your crossover, so go ahead and lift that knee up and over, kind of like a kind of like a butt raise, go ahead and lift it back, do your push-up. Lift that leg up, back, push-up. Okay, so you're gonna be strictly working out there, the right side first, and then you'll do your left. Definitely an advanced exercise, ooh, but it's a lot of fun. All right, next, onto a weighted sumo slash play squat. Okay, here you go. For this, your feet need to be out wide. If you hear plie, if you hear sumo, that means wide, okay? So plie, your legs are actually pointed out, okay? So you need to be very careful if you have weak hips. That's why warming up is very important, okay? And with this, you need a very engaged, strong core, okay? So I'm gonna be using the weight, I'm gonna be using 35, and I'm gonna have the weight down in front of me. So this is your variation. If you don't have weights, or if you wanna pick up a water bottle or a textbook, completely fine. And you're going to go down kind of slowly because your legs are pointed out, kind of 
kind of slowly and coming back up. So these squats are excellent to trim down the legs and get those hips slim, okay? So again, you're down into your plie and then you're up, weighted squat. You're down and you don't have to do this very, very fast, okay? All right, so the variation with your um, weight is gonna look like this. Go ahead and get your weight and you can go ahead and, let's see, you might just have to hold it like this, so like this, okay? And you're gonna have the weight and your legs pointed out wide. So you need to make sure, I think I'm actually gonna hold it this way. You need to make sure that your body is up. You don't wanna be leaned over doing squats like that because you might pull out your back. Again, you don't wanna be like this. You could definitely hurt your back. So you need to have, that's why I think a strong core. You need to hold that weight up and hold that body up. So when you go down, you have a straight back and you're coming up and you can squeeze the glutes, okay? So you're down with the wide squat and back, okay? So it should feel really, really good if you feel it burning, okay? If you feel it hurting, stop. So down and up, down, and up, okay, so you're keeping a straight back and you're letting the weight make it a tad bit more harder than to go up and down. To finish off this workout, we're gonna be doing some kettlebell swings, 25 with the right and 25 with the left, okay? So again, make sure that you're looking at the description so you'll know when to do each of these, okay? We've done these a lot now, so you should be an expert, okay? So I'm just gonna use a five pound dumbbell for demonstration purposes, and here you go. You're going to be Squatting down, you don't do a full squat when you do kettlebells. You don't do this, okay? It's a slight bend in the leg. The weight's going between your crotch and then you're coming up. So you're down and you're swinging it up and you are thrusting your hips forward. That's the whole point of the uh, kettlebell swing. Most people think, oh, I'm just working out my shoulders. You're actually working out core. It is a core intensive exercise, okay? So you're here and you're up. You're swinging that. You're thrusting your hips forward, and you don't need to go all the way up here with the kettlebell. You can't even see my hands. If you can't see my hand, you don't need to be up there. Okay, so you're up, right there, and go. Okay, small squats, just like that, okay? On the front, if it will make a difference to help you out, you're going down and up, down, up. You're doing 25, just like this. So for beginners, I really think that you can do this, because when I say variations for squats, I always want you to squat halfway anyway. So here's your halfway squat. You've got your kettlebell, your water bottle. You have something in your hand when you're coming out. Remember again, last time, to thrust your hips forward. You should see yourself doing this if you're working out in the mirror, okay? That's gonna be the kettlebell.
guys, so that was my first treadmill wedding workout to get at least you excited for me to get married. And if you're getting married, if you know someone that's getting married, feel free to share these workouts because they are amazing. And not only, of course, are they good for a wedding, if you want to get in top knots and uh, shape, you will do workouts like this, okay? So keep pushing hard. Remember to cool down and get ready for the next one. See ya.